All right, guys, well, we are going to get started. Let me go to that first slide there. Yes. Um, we're going to open up the slides here in just a minute, and then uh, our, hey, Gina, welcome. Hi. Our faces are going to get to be about that big, and then you're going to get to see our slides. Um, so like, like Aaron said, you know, you probably want to grab a pen and a piece of paper or something to take some notes down. Um, we do have a gift for you at the end. We'll explain a little bit more about that here in just a minute. But uh, we're going to get this thing cranking, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this. All right. All right. So this is how to have your breakthrough year. Better focus, better health, better you. Uh, I'm out, obviously Dr. Ryan, and this is my wife, Dr. Erin. Um, we are just super excited that you're here. Um, this webinar is for you if you've been stuck in a rut at any point in your life, but especially right now, if you feel like you're just in a place that you can't really get out of and you really want to, um, if you believe that your potential doesn't match your reality, which basically just means, you know, where you're at currently in life doesn't really match where you feel like you could or should be. I know I've struggled with that a lot in my life. Um, so we want to help you bridge that gap tonight. Um, this webinar is also for you if you want better focus, better health. You know, we talk to literally thousands of patients every year, and we always ask them what their number one health goal is, and it, or, or sorry, number one uh, life goal is at the beginning of the year, especially, and it always has to do with health in some capacity, whether it's losing weight, having better energy, better fitness, uh, better sleep, better hormone balance, better nutrition. Um, so we're going to give you some really key foundational principles tonight to help you achieve that. Um, and then finally, if you're ready to commit to a better you for a better life, and really that's, that's the difference. You know, everybody wants a better life. Everybody wants, you know, an upgrade. They want to take their life to the next level, but really you have to be committed. And I think that if you're on this webinar tonight, um, you're one of those people. So we just want to say kudos to you, you know, way to be an action taker. You are on here which means you want better for your life. And we do too. And we also feel like that's, um, that's part of the call in our lives is to always be pursuing a better version of ourselves. And we also think that's the fun of it. So it doesn't have to be this daunting, strict, really hardcore discipline, you know, uh, grueling thing. We actually think it's kind of fun to pursue our dreams. And so, you know, we're not gonna give you a laundry list of things that you can't do or things that you have to be really disciplined about tonight. We're going to show you how to make this thing really fun so that you can really have a breakthrough year, um, but enjoy your life at the same time. So here's specifically what you're going to learn tonight. You're going to learn uh, the seven steps to creating the life of your dreams. Number one, how to define your breakthrough. Super important. You got to get crystal clear on what it is specifically that you want. Everybody wants something different or better, but a lot of people don't know exactly what that is. So we're going to teach you how to define it. We're also going to teach you how to identify what your big why is. You know, your big why is that thing um, that runs deep in you that you may have not ever actually identified or put your finger on before, but it's the thing that actually sustains you and keeps you moving toward your goals. We're also going to teach you how to set smart goals, which is something you might be familiar with, but a lot of people, even though they know it, they don't do it. It's absolutely critical to achieving success in your life consistently, not just once or twice, but consistently we're also going to show you how to war plan to win. This is how to actually structure your life, how to actually plan your life so that all you have to do is wake up in the morning and just press play. And then you just follow the plan, but you have to create that plan on the front end and it takes a little bit of strategy. Next thing you're going to learn is how to create social pressure. So this is one of those secrets that we've picked up from experts over the years and we've applied to our own lives and we're going to give you specific examples, but if you can, find a way to create social pressure in your life. It's a good form of peer pressure. Um, you'll be a lot more likely to hit your goals and achieve the things you want to achieve year after year. Number six, we're going to show you how to keep score. You know, you can't change the play in a game if you don't know, or you can't call the right play in a game if you don't know the score. Um, and then last but not least, and maybe the most important element of all is how to generate endless energy. You know, we know that people in the world that are the most successful, the people that do the biggest things, you know, uh, invariably, they all have this incredible amount of energy for whatever it is they're doing. And it's not just because they're passionate. We're all passionate. We all have conviction. We all have values. We all have this thing that we want to achieve in our lives. 
but you have to be strategic and intentional every day of your life in order to generate endless energy. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, don't leave early. We're gonna try our very best to keep this thing just to an hour and we have a, a, a special gift for you, but you have to stay till the end, guys. You gotta stay till the end. We've worked a lot on this thing for the last several years. We finally put it together in a really user-friendly, it's really pretty, um, it's really cool looking. I'm really proud of it. CC helped us out a ton with this. Um, but the, this is the dream life blueprint. So seven steps to creating the life of your dreams. It's an awesome ebook. Uh, it's over 10 pages of exactly what you need to do. And you can fill in the blank. It's, it's an interactive tool. So it's not meant to just hang out on your computer somewhere. You're actually supposed to print this thing out and fill it out and apply it and then go back to it over and over and over again. Um, we're going to give this to you at the end, totally free if you stick around. Um, next thing, we're also going to tell you about an awesome event that you guys have been asking for for a long time. So if you've been around long enough, you know that we do nutrition workshops, we do um, fitness workshops, we do workshops on pretty much everything. But um, inevitably, every time we ask our patients and people in the community, you, you know, what is it that you want to learn more about or what's your biggest struggle? it always has to do with nutrition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, I don't know what to do. Sometimes it's, I know too much and I can't figure out what's right and what's wrong. And, and for most people it's, I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. And so keto is obviously the most popular topic in nutrition and maybe even in the health world at large right now. And there's a lot of misinformation, um, but there's also a lot of validity to the health benefits of eating the ketogenic lifestyle and even more importantly, living, living a ketogenic lifestyle. And so we're bringing in an expert who's a good friend of ours. He's an author, functional medicine practitioner, acclaimed speaker. He's an expert on the keto diet. We're going to fly him in for this event. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, if you stick around to the end, we have a special webinar only discount that's just for you guys. We're going to show you how to take advantage of that um, at the very end. So stick around. And here we go. All right. So this is us. Uh, Dr. Ryan, uh, I think I should probably introduce you. Sure. But so Dr. Ryan, a lot of you know, he's a lifelong athlete. You know, he was an all-state quarterback, which is pretty awesome. Collegiate uh, football player. He graduated from Western Washington University with a degree in exercise science. Um, so he was also a personal trainer while we went to chiropractic school together. Uh, so he's just really done it all. He, we got to, uh, oh, I shouldn't forget that you graduated magna cum laude. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a big deal, but we kind of were competitive. You guys don't care that. about that, but it's it's okay. Uh, so he's also getting his uh, functional medicine certification uh, just to enhance the value that he brings to all of you who are watching. Really proud of him for that. Uh, personally, he's competed in seven Ironman triathlons. So that's like amazing if anybody's even done one, but for this guy to do seven and, you know, have a family and a business uh, is just phenomenal. So he's really, really focused. He has a lot of authority to be able to deliver this information to you guys. Really what that means is I've put myself through a lot of pain so that I can learn from it. You know, and that's a life principle too, that, you know, you learn from painful experiences. And I, I physically put myself in these experiences because I like to learn and grow so then I can share stuff with you guys. But um, you're no slouch yourself. I mean, you're Aaron's a lifelong athlete, played college soccer. In fact, that's where we met at Western Washington University. She's got a degree in communication, a minor in history. Um, we moved to Atlanta, Georgia to go to chiropractic school. She graduated doctor of chiropractic as well. She's getting her functional medicine certification as well so that she can bring extra value to you guys. Um, she's a published researcher, which a lot of you may not know. Um, and maybe her biggest accomplishment is three natural pregnancies and births. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, that's probably like the equivalent of 10 or 15 Ironmans right yes, there. So easily. Um, and then together, so I feel like, you know, some of our greatest accomplishments aren't really things that we can necessarily hang on the wall. However, we uh, moved to Coeur d'Alene in 2011. If you guys don't know our story, um, we moved to Coeur d'Alene in 2011. We trained in some of the um, biggest health centers in the world right after school. So we actually took an extra year and a half after chiropractic school, went to some of the most um, 
uh, successful health clinics in the world, trained for an additional amount of time, moved to Coeur d'Alene in 2011, opened our clinic. And in the last seven years, we've been extremely blessed. We've taken care of over 10,000 patients, um, which means we've basically seen every type of health condition that you can imagine. And we've helped a lot of those people, not all of them, but we've helped um, a lot of them. Since then, we've also uh, had the privilege of speaking all around the country. So now we get to pour into students, we get to pour into the ch other chiropractors, we get to teach other people how to um, you know, have clinical excellence for their patients and also how to um, you know, achieve success in their clinic. And you know, probably our, our proudest uh, accomplishment is just, you know, we've, we've, we feel like we've never compromised on our values you know, spiritually and uh, just ethically. Um, we've also managed, uh, or maintained an incredible marriage. I feel like, I mean, it's usually incredible yeah. for almost 13 years and we have three beautiful kids. So, you know, that's, that's, um, what I, what I'm the most proud of. And we just love doing life together. So really why we tell you that story is, you know, we, we want to take everything that we've learned over the years, mostly from the struggles, you know, not, I don't feel like you learn as much from the victories in life. I, th I feel like you learn a lot more from the things you don't succeed at. And there are plenty, believe me. I mean, sometimes you look at people and you feel like they have it all together or they just, everything works out for them. I promise you, not everything has always worked out for us. You know, in every area of life, we've had to work our butt offs, butts off. Um, <laughs> we've, we've spent over a million dollars just in coaching over the last decade for ourselves and our team that works for us. Um, so we've put a lot of money, time, effort into coaching. And really, it's just a sign of, you know, recognizing that we don't have it all together. But at this point, we do feel like we're in a place finally where we can start sharing some of, you know, the strategies that we've used to overcome these failures or these struggles. And that's what we want to share with you to, uh, tonight. And our hope is that you'll be able to glean some nuggets that you can apply to your life and you can start creating the life of your dreams and have your breakthrough year as well. That's right. All right. So you can go ahead and. Oh yeah. Thanks. So step one, we're going to define your breakthrough. So this, I it really hits home for me because uh, when I was graduating chiropractic school, I found out I was pregnant with our first child. Uh, and so everything that I thought I wanted and everything, you know, my plan that I had for my life suddenly was totally shifted and changed in a very, very good way. But also kind of I had to redefine what it was that I truly wanted. Um, how was I going to, you know, bring this gift of chiropractic to the world while also, you know, becoming a new mom? Uh, so maybe you've been there before where you're stuck. You don't even know what it is what you that you really want. Uh, so start to dig deep, start thinking, you know, what is it? If you could paint the picture perfect life for yourself, you know, you know, dream big, but write it down, share it with others. You know, if you could change or improve one thing in your life, what would be that one thing that's going to make the most impact? What is it going to look like to achieve that? You know, what are you going to feel like when you achieve it? Um, what are others going to feel about you or say about you when you when you achieve that thing and your level? I'll say this. Your level of frustration in your life is is proportional to your level of congruence or incongruence. So if you want to know, you know, how to be successful in the things that you want and you want to know how to achieve those those dreams, you know, you got to look at your life and ask yourself, you know, am I am I living congruently for what I want? OK, so that's kind of a. a, a big one. It's a heavy one. Um, and it does take some time. So I definitely recommend getting, you know, getting by yourself with a notebook and a pen and really just thinking deep about what it is that you really, really want. Yep. The next thing, step two is going to be to identify your why. So if you've come to any of our seminars before, then you know that we talk about your big why. And this is really the core of everything. This is who you are. This is, this says purpose and everybody needs purpose on this, on this earth in my opinion, you have to have purpose. But a lot of times we're just kind of wandering through life, not really understanding what our purpose is uh, and just kind of going from one thing to the next. So what is that thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, you know, that keeps you going when you want to quit? And it has to be bigger than yourself. It has to be bigger than, you know, wanting to look good in a bathing suit or, or wanting to look good for that next reunion um, or even just making money. It has to be bigger than that. So how does achieving this goal improve the lives of those around you or the world? 
And for me, my why is I want to leave a legacy to my children, to my grandchildren for seven generations even. Um, I want to leave a legacy to my community. And so that's what gets me going. That's what keeps me uh, doing what I know I need to do, even when it doesn't feel good. So you can go to the next slide. Hopefully you guys are taking notes, by the way. These are, these are super powerful principles. You know, and we and we pretty much put these in order as well as far as importance, you know, because step number one, you got to know what you want. Like, it's hard to go after something in life that you don't know what it is, you That's know, right. to, to a destination unknown. Any road will get you there. We've all heard that, yep. you know, and there's a difference between being busy and being intentional, you know, being purposeful. So I would rather be lazy with no purpose than really busy and not really know what I'm being busy for. You know, that's frustrating, like really working hard toward something that you're not really even sure about, you know? So defining that breakthrough, that's what step number one is. And then figuring out why is that important to me? That's mm -hmm. step number two. And that's really that thing that's gonna get you out of bed in the morning. And that why should be plastered everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it written on Aaron's bathroom mirror. I've put it on my cell phone, you know, screen saver uh, or lock screen. Um, cause it's something you need to go back to over and over and over again. If your why is just to look good in a bathing suit for the summer, well, you might lose enough weight to look good in a bathing suit in the summer, but guess what? That cold weather comes and so does all the weight, you know, cause <laughs> not, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but guess what? That's a recipe for frustration. And if you've ever been through that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, but the why, you know, why do you want to be healthier? Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to quit smoking? You know, that will actually transcend the seasons. And that'll be the thing that keeps you going. And it's also the thing that um, if it's about something that's bigger than you, it'll be a lot more concrete because then, you know, you don't want to let people down. You know, purpose has to do with other people. Pur purpose is never about you. Your purpose is in life is not for you to succeed, for you to get the credit, for you to get the glory, for you to get the money, you to get the attention. That's never your purpose. Your purpose is always about other people. Yeah. And so you got to tie your purpose into what it is that you're trying to achieve that breakthrough that defined breakthrough needs to be you know tied to or anchored to your purpose which again should be have to do with other people so step three is once you know what you want once you know why you want it now we have to get into actually setting some concrete goals and this is this is a step that a lot of people mess up myself included you know i think we all fall victim to this because we just think we know what we want in our heads um, but the reality is a lot of people say, well, my goal is to lose weight. Well, what does that look like? Is that one pound over six months? Because technically if you did that, you'd achieve your goal, right? And you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but most of the time that's, that's not it. But we, but because we didn't set a smart goal, um, then we don't really ever know whether or not we achieved it. We just know that the end result really wasn't what we were shooting for. So a smart goal, you guys have probably heard this. If you have it, write this down. This is how you should set all of your goals, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. Smart goal needs to be specific. What is specific? I want to lose 10 pounds. That's specific. I want to lose weight or I want to be healthy. That's even worse. I want to be healthy or I want a better marriage. That's not specific. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not specific. It's very vague, you know, because losing weight to one person might look different than losing weight to someone else or having a good marriage to one person might look different than having a good marriage to someone else. So you got to be specific and it also needs to be measurable. So if it's a health goal, it's actually a lot easier because if you want to lose 10 pounds, 10 pounds, pounds are measurable, right? If you want to save money, dollars are measurable. If you want to have a better marriage or be a better person, that's not as measurable. So the goal then needs to turn into something that you can measure. Like it needs to be a leading indicator. So if Aaron and I agree that a good marriage involves having weekly date nights where we can dialogue and converse about our lives, um, then, then the goal becomes something that we can measure, meaning we do a date night every week, yeah. right? That's measurable. The next one is it needs to be attainable, right? I always make the analogy that, you know, unless you're Spud Webb, if you're five, six, you know, having a goal of being in the NBA may not be the smartest goal. I'm not saying you should give it up, right? If that's you and you feel like you have all the other tools except height, you know, then go for it. But for most of us, you know, if you're 30, 40, 50 years old, you're not tall, you're not athletic, 
let's take NBA off of the vision board. Okay, let's just do that. Let's be real with ourselves. You want to set attainable goals. Another example would be if you want to lose weight, maybe don't say I want to lose 100 pounds in three months. Like there may be a way to physiologically do that, but I don't recommend it as a doctor. And I don't really think it's attainable, especially not in a healthy way. So you just want to be realistic. So there is something to be said for setting uh, goals that are um, compelling, right? Um, like getting your functional medicine certification in one year's time while being a practicing, you know, healthcare provider. That's pretty ambitious. It makes me, it feels like I have to stretch a little bit to achieve that. However, I know it's also attainable, right? So it's, it's, there's a chance. That's what we're saying. There's a chance. You got to set a goal where there's at least a chance, right? Um, the R is for relevant. And really that just means that it should be something that's relevant to your life. You know, so if you have a family, if you have a, if you have a steady job, if you have, you know, roots in your, in where, wherever you're at, you know, a relevant goal may not be, well, I want a million dollars and to sip, sip my ties on the, you know, on the beach of the Bahamas, the rest of the days of my life, you know, like, I mean, nothing wrong with that. That sounds great for, well, for me, maybe for a few days, but um, the reality is that may not be the most relevant goal to set for your life. And I think you get what I, where I'm coming from. Like you want to make sure that your goals are also in alignment with the current season of your life, right? It's very difficult to achieve something that's way over here, even if it's a valuable goal, even if it's a noble thing, right? It may not be relevant to your current situation. So I know the Bahamas thing, that's probably not on your list anyway, but I think a lot of people have aspirations and dreams that may not be totally in alignment or relevant to the current life season. So just make sure it's relevant because then it's gonna be a lot more, you know, it's gonna be a lot easier to achieve. Um, and the last one, and this is the hardest one, you guys, put a time limit on it. Without a time limit, there's no subconscious, you know, hourglass that's ticking away, the sand's running out. Um, and then we just naturally, all of us, myself included, we're all natural procrastinators. We will take as long as we can to achieve a goal unless there's a time limit on it. So the last one, make a goal, make, make sure it's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant. But the most important thing is, man, slap a time limit on it. Even if it's arbitrary, I'm going to lose 10 pounds by June 17th. I don't care. Why is June 17th important? Doesn't matter. It's a time. Set it. Forget it super important. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get into war planning. And if you've been around us long enough, you know that this is one of our core, core, core tools in order to just organize your life and set your life up in a way that makes it easier, not easy, but easier to just stay consistent and stay disciplined. So this is just an example of my Google calendar from maybe a year ago or so. And I'm not going to go through it, but you can just see that pretty much all the time in my life is accounted for. And you might look at that and get overwhelmed and go, oh my gosh, there's no way I could be that disciplined or that strict with my time, or that just looks not fun to have to account for every hour of my day. But listen, a lot of that stuff that's in there, you guys, it's fun time. Like it's working out, it's um, you know quiet time and reflection time in the morning. There's like a four hour chunk there for family time. There's date nights, there's TV time. There's, you know, if you look at Saturday, there's a hard workout, there's an hour in the office, and then it's, there's nothing because I don't, I don't want to plan every hour of my life. The problem is most people don't plan any of the hours in their lives. And one of my favorite quotes is Dave Ramsey, who's, you know, one of the foremost uh, personalities or experts on finance. You know, he says, you should give every dollar a job before you get it. So before you get that paycheck, make a budget, give every dollar a job. Even if one of those jobs is buying a four wheeler, earmark that dollar, give it that job before you get it. And then not only are you that much closer to actually buying the four wheeler, but all your other dollars did their job at the same time, right? When we don't do that, we end up acting emotionally or impulsively and we get this paycheck and then guess what? We've all done it. We just give our dollars to whatever we're emotional about at that moment, right? We, we've all done that, let's be honest. Most of us do that with our time every single day. We're reacting to how we feel. I'm going to wait. Maybe I'll work out. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll eat right. Maybe I won't. Maybe we'll go on a date night. Maybe we won't. Maybe I'll show up my best self and prepare at work. Maybe I won't. It kind of depends on how I feel. 
you can't live your life like that because it's just too up and down, right? We're emotional people, human, you know, beings. And if you live your life based on emotion, in my experience, the chances of you succeeding and sticking to something consistently is just not really going to happen. Right. So the goal is, and there's a template for this, you guys, in the dream life blueprint that you'll get at the end that you can actually fill out in by hand. Um, I use Google. We've used Google for a long time because we can actually share our calendars, meaning she knows exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what her doing. We actually look at this together every week just to make sure that there's a, an appropriate amount of different things in our lives, like date night, date night time for kids, mm -hmm. time for exercise, time for church and our, our involvement in our faith community, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's all in there. And this is a work in progress. Even to this day, I have to work on this. And it's something that I go back to every single week. And it's never perfect. And listen, this also doesn't mean that you just create your dream life and then all of a sudden everything happens exactly the way you want it to. Never. My, my week never happens exactly like I plan it to. But guess what? Because I had intention on the front end, because I gave every hour a job on the front end before I got it, the likelihood of those hours actually doing that job goes up exponentially, right? So even if I'm only 70 or 80% of the way there, that means that 70 or 80% of the time in my life and every week is spent doing what I want it to be doing, right? So super powerful. You have to war plan to win. And then the cool thing is once you've taken some time, and believe me, this will take some time. The first couple times you do it, this may take hours, especially if you're going to do it with nice pretty colors and different labels and everything like, like I have. I'm kind of nerdy like that. Um, but even if you just do it by hand on paper, you know, in an Excel, Excel spreadsheet or you just want to draw boxes, you know, that's fine too. Um, it's going to take some time. But the time you put in on the front end, you will make back exponentially on the back end because what you do is you just – you create this dream life and then Monday morning rolls around and you literally just wake up. You look at, this is why I use Google because I can look at it on my phone. I look at it and I go, Oh, okay. That's what I'm doing today. And I just go do that. I just do it stupid. I, I literally do like Ironman triathlon training. I just put it in my calendar like, Oh, time to get up and go run seven miles. I, I guess that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> like I don't have to think about it. There's no emotion. There's no, should I, shouldn't I, how do I feel? Do I really, no, I already decided that way back when, when I made my war plan, now I just wake up and I go do it, right? Does that mean I'm perfect? Does that mean that there's never any mornings where I don't hit the snooze 10 times and then eventually just sleep in and call it a personal day? <laughs> no, I mean, I do that. I'm human just like you, but having this war plan increases your chances exponentially. Yep. Cool. Cool. All right. So create social pressure. You know, it hurts more to let someone else down than to let yourself down. And uh, this is super true for any time I've ever set out to accomplish something or set a goal. Uh, you know, the gut reaction is, OK, I'm going to set a goal, but I'm not going to tell anybody because then if it doesn't happen, then no one will know. Um, and that sounds OK, but then most of the time those goals never were achieved. So what I love about you is that when you tell me, you know, after we discuss it, of course, when you tell me you're going to do an Usually. Ironman <laughs> and you get my OK, there have been times when it has not been OK and he's honored me. Um, but he will, you will blast it on social media. And I think that is to create that pressure for yourself yeah. because you really don't, you don't want to let other people down. And it also just motivates you. Um, and it inspires others, you know, to see that you're doing that. So, you know, for me, I'm not as bold. I don't necessarily like to flash things all over social media when I set a goal. Um, and that's okay. You know, if you're more introverted, you know, just find people that you respect and who have knowledge and experience in the area in which you're setting your goal. So if your goal is to run a half marathon and you've never done that before, you might want to find somebody that you trust who has done that before and who maybe has a similar season of life. You know, if you've got kids, maybe you talk to this person and say, hey, what's a realistic training plan? Uh, can you hold me accountable, you know, week by week? and check in with me and you know if i'm failing can you you know offer your expertise whatever it is so that's just one example but the 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 goal here is that you just want to tell someone um get somebody on in your corner who can 
cheer you on, but who also can call you out if you're not, you know, hitting those benchmarks to achieve your goal. That's huge. Yeah. And really it's about removing the back door. So yes. I think subconsciously we set these goals, but we don't tell people or we don't tell people that we really know will hold us accountable. Like we tell our spouse because we know our spouse is kind of afraid to like hold us accountable or like, I'm not afraid, you know, no, she's not. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, but you know, it's not always the prettiest situation where you have your spouse saying, Hey, didn't you say you were going to work out every day this year? Like what's wrong with you? Um, however, what I'm getting at is that by telling people that, you know, will hold you accountable. Like when I post stuff on social media, like I know there's people watching. Um, and I know that if I, I know that they're going to ask me like, Hey, how's it going? And after that date goes by like, Hey, how did the race go? And I just don't want to have to say, well, I had to, I backed out or I gave that up or I bagged it, or it was like, I want to follow through, yeah. you know? So by me posting that really all I'm doing is I'm taking the back door away from myself. Like, I really don't care if anybody sees that. I don't, it's not a popularity thing. I'm not trying to brag or boast like, Hey, look what I'm doing. Really for me, it's about removing the back door. So you got to find areas in your life that where you can tell people or make your goals public so that it's a little uncomfortable and it's going to be awkward if you don't follow through, right? Don't find the person that's going to pat you on the butt and tell you it's okay no matter what. Like that's not a good accountability partner. You need someone. And for me, it's a group of people, right? Because I can, I can deal with disappointing one person or I can make up a good story or excuse for one person. It's really hard to undo that online because I don't have enough time or energy to explain myself or justify you know, why I didn't follow through. So creating social pressure is huge, huge, huge. All right. Step six, we want to keep score. So what you focus on does expand, you know, it, and like you said earlier, if you can't call the next, you can't call the next play if you don't know what the score is. So if you don't know where you're at, you don't know what you need to do to improve or change things up. So we say score your effort. And this is going to be kind of, I would say, at your own discretion, but on a weekly basis, if not more frequently, uh, so that you can just track your progress and fulfillment comes from the pursuit of progress, you know, not the achievement of it. So it's the person who gets taken by a helicopter to the top of Mount Everest is going to have a much different feeling when they get to the top than the person who actually climbed their way to the top. Are you with me? So, uh, you know, just mark your progress along the way, and that's just going to give you motivation to keep going. Uh, and then, you know, it can be subjective. What went well? Write it down. What needs improvement? You know, if something wasn't working right, you should identify that, write it down, and then figure out how you're going to improve on the following week. So if your goal is to lose X amount of pounds in six months, you should be probably weighing yourself every single week. Um, and obviously that that one is going to fluctuate. But for the most part, you should be seeing, you know, a downward trend every single week. And if not, you know, maybe maybe it's time you need to keep a food journal or um, have somebody looking at your your exercise or your workouts to see what's you know, if you need to mix things up. Just an example for our marriage, you know, keeping score looks like, you know, did we have date night? And there was a point where we were, you know, rating each other on a scale of zero to ten in terms of how good of a spouse we were being every single week. Um, and then we'd give each other, you know, opportunity to say, you know, this is how I feel you could have improved. And, you know, usually I'm the one who was doing the best every time. Right. Sure. Perfect wife. Okay. That's what so. makes me a nine. It's <laughs> just saying, sure. So you guys get the idea. I say like Sunday evening, you could be doing this. Just make it kind of a, a time that you just commit to every single week to be looking at your goal and looking at your progress and that, you know, that nothing comes in between you and that time um, and that period of reflection. Yeah. It actually becomes fun. This is kind of like calling a timeout in a game and huddling just to check the score, check the situation, um, you know, figure out what's going well. Let's do more of that. What's not going well. How do we need to change that? And what's, what's interesting is in the beginning, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of challenging. Um, it's kind of like looking in, looking at your life in the mirror, but over time it becomes life giving. It becomes energizing because your brain just subconsciously knows, Hey, there's a checkpoint not too far off. Like I can tell this is not going well, but my next checkpoint is only a few days away. I know that I'm going to spend intentional time evaluating what's going well, what's not going well. And 
you know, that's also a great time to do your war plan for the next week. You know, so how this would look in real life, and this is how it looks in our lives, is usually on Sundays, and I'll be honest, we leave church, especially when it's nice outside, we leave church, we go for a drive around the lake, we try to subdue our children with some type of technology. I know we're bad parents, but it just is what it is. We only do it for like a half hour. Uh, we grab coffees, we sit by the lake, and then we go through this. We go through, hey, what went well this week? What didn't go well? What needs focus or um, attention? And then let's plan this next week. How can we make it better? What, what's the objective for next week? And when I say objective, I know it makes it kind of sound like corporate or, you know, like this is just a business transaction. Um, it's really not. It's just you get what you get my drift. Like, how can we make next week more of what we want our lives to truly look like? And it, and it becomes fun. Like it, it becomes fun to get feedback, right? It's not criticism. It's not, you know, negative information. It's just feedback. So then you can finally, you know, make changes and do something about it and do this with yourself or even better do it with your spouse. All right. So this is the last step in the seven steps to creating the life of your dreams. Um, this is called how to generate endless energy. So like I said in the beginning, you know, if you look at all high performers and high achievers in the world, whether they're athletes, they're writers, they're entrepreneurs, they're influencers, they're inventors, um, scientists, these, these people all have one thing in common and it's not athleticism. It's not uh, their lifestyle necessarily, but it is energy, right? And energy just creates action. If you have enough energy, you will take action. Anytime I ever talked to someone and it was like, why, you know, why didn't you do what you were supposed to do? It, inevitably it comes down to, I just didn't feel like, well, why didn't you feel like it? You just didn't, you didn't have the energy for it. Sometimes it's mental, emotional energy or spiritual energy, but a lot of times it's just physical energy. Your body just doesn't have the get up and go in order to go make things happen, right? Um, and so the people with the most energy are going to always win. Energy rules. It always does. If you want to be a high performer, high achiever, you have to. In fact, uh, we're reading this book as, a, as an office team right now called High Performance Habits. And one of the chapters is about generating energy. And they've done a survey of all these high performance around high performers around the world. And they found out that the people at the highest level of any industry or sport uh, all have, they all spend as much, if not more of their time generating energy for their lives than they do on the actual thing. So what that means is, you know, if you're an entrepreneur to be at the highest level, you spend actually more time taking care of your personal health, your body, your sleep, your nutrition, hydration, all these things we're going to go through to generate energy. And then that small amount of energy or time that you actually put into your business or your whatever it is, your goal, it's so much more impactful and powerful because you have so much more energy behind it. So the other thing to realize is that you are like a power plant, right? A lot of people think that they either have energy or they just don't. And a lot of people think it's genetics or luck, you know? Um, or their environment, right? I have no energy because everything's crazy around me. Well, listen, you are like a power plant. You don't have energy, you make energy, right? Power plants have the capacity to make huge amounts of energy, but it takes certain steps and certain ingredients, right? So we're gonna go through, for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, we're gonna go through the five keys, because again, you can have you can have the, def the, uh, the breakthrough defined, you can have um, your big why, you can set a smart goal. You can war plan to win. What's the other one? Accountability. You can have uh, social pressure. You can have all these things, but if you don't have the energy to actually get up and go do it, it's going to be really, really challenging. And most likely you're going to end up at the same place next year, frustrated with the same goal, wishing that next year would be your breakthrough year. We don't want that. We want this year to be your breakthrough year. You have to have the energy to do it, whatever it is. So here we go. Here are the five keys to generate endless energy. Key number one is to win your morning. So this is huge, huge, huge. Um, this is one of my all time favorites. This is something that was taught to me when I was in uh, undergrad, when I was at Western and then really refined in me when I was in chiropractic school, just from coaches and mentors. Um, 
But everything that I've read, and I've literally read over 300 books on leadership and personal development, personal power, everyone is unanimous and they're thinking that high achievers, people that are the most successful, their morning routine is sacred to them. They don't all look the same. So your morning routine could look completely different to mine, but it better be important to you and you better make it such that you feel like you're winning and you're starting your day off right. And you do that by winning your morning. So I'm, I just wrote down a couple of things. These are things that I personally do. Um, some of it's based on research. Some of it's based on taking good ideas from other people. A lot of it's just based on trial and error. Like I did things you know, that I heard other people did. I didn't really get a lot out of it. So I stopped doing it. These are the things because I don't have you know endless amounts of time and neither do you. But these are the things that I do in the morning and I fit all this stuff into about an hour and a half. So that includes showering, getting ready, making a smoothie, working out. So I start with gratitude and I really start with gratitude because studies show that whatever you think about when you first wake up in the morning sets the intention or the trajectory of your thoughts for the rest of the day. A lot of times we wake up, what do we do? We roll over, grab our phone, start checking social media, start checking emails. We look at texts and I hate to break this to you guys, but most of the time people are emailing you or texting you or posting stuff on social media. It's not the most life giving thing. Right. In fact, a lot of times people are only getting a hold of you to, to um, give you their problems, especially email. Email is one of the words. I don't get a whole lot of emails in the morning like, hey, I just wanted to give you the good news. <laughs> Usually it's, hey, I have this problem. Can you help me? And not that I'm not going to, but I don't want to start my day with that. So I don't touch any of that stuff. I set the intention. I control my thoughts for the first little while in the morning. And start with gratitude. It could be something simple like, hey, what are three things that I'm grateful for? Well, you're, you can always be grateful for something. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for date night last night. I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. I mean, you could, you could get real basic. But studies show that when your brain's in a state of gratitude, it's impossible to be anxious or depressed. Super powerful. Powerful. Start with gratitude. I personally then get into prayer and meditation. It's just, this doesn't have to be weird. It's really just... Um, organizing my thoughts, letting the dust settle, and then intentionally, you know, setting my thoughts on a certain trajectory for the rest of the day. A lot of times stuff just comes to me. A lot of times I just sit there and stare at the inside of my eyelids for five minutes. <laughs> it's okay, right? But it's intentional. Um, you want to fill yourself up with the energy that you want to give all day long. All right. Next thing for me, and I rarely, 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 Aaron will tell you out of 365 days of the year, I maybe miss five days total. A lot of times it's because it's outside of my control. Like Straight. literally we were on a plane for 24 hours or something crazy, right? I work out in the morning, even if the workout is seven minutes long. Like there were times when I'm injured or I'm running late, I'll literally go into our gym in our garage or I'll go into the basement or wherever and I'll do something that'll make me sweat a little bit yeah. just really quickly. For me, it just, it's like setting the reset button on my physiology Immediately after that, I make a power smoothie. We're going to give you guys some more nutrition information here um, in one of the next steps. But power smoothie in the morning for me is just simple. It's easy. It's consistent. It's reproducible. It's predictable. I don't have to think about it. And I know that for me personally, and I think for the rest of our family, it's probably the most power packed or nutrition packed meal of the entire day. So I know that if I can win my smoothie in the morning, I've won nutrition for the rest of the day. So that's winning your morning. All right. So make sure that you're getting exercise on a regular basis. And that may for you just look like walking. Um, but the point is get moving. You know, you, you if we want to be healthy, we know we have to get moving. And what what I've found um, after being a pretty much a college athlete for my entire life, and which is a mostly an endurance sport, although we did have you know, spurts of sprinting and things, but, you know, I'd run anywhere from seven to eight miles a game. Um, so really, you know, long distance. And when I got into my mid twenties, um, I just found that my energy levels were just really shot. And no matter how far I ran, you know, I just never could get that energy up. And so then I discovered high intensity interval training. And I loved the fact that I could do a workout, feel completely wiped, um, and still have the rest of my day. You know, it wasn't like devoting two hours to go on a run. It was like devoting 20 minutes in my living room with a few free weights. And I was having more energy. I was in better shape physically. 
um, than ever before. I had better concentration and, you know, lower body fat, which was amazing to me because I was working out less time. Uh, so really, really important for people who feel like they don't have enough time to work out, you know, and with each kid that we've added to our tribe, I have less and less time literally to work out. So um, anything that I can get done in 15 to 20 minutes is a win for me. So this is literally mostly what I do on a daily basis. So look at some of the, the research that has come out with the HIIT training. You know, it's, it's been found to boost human growth hormones. So that's going to build lean muscle, help you burn fat. It's going to reduce abdominal fat and increase aerobic power. So how cool is that? That's out of the Journal of Obesity. Uh, you're going to see an immediate change in your DNA, which alters the gene expression that's responsible for fat metabolism. So maybe you, you've blamed it on your genes your whole life that you just can't seem to slim down or tone up. Well, guess what? High intensity interval training can actually change your gene expression. OK, so give it a shot. Uh, another one is it improves insulin sensitivity and blood sugar for 24 hours. This is so critical because millions of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic and don't even know it. So we all need to be doing things that are going to naturally lower our blood sugar. And this is just going to naturally boost our energy. Uh, just, just give it a shot, I promise. Here is an awesome <laughs> screenshot of Dr. Ryan and myself. This is the very first Max T3 uh, video release. So if you've ever done Max T3, these are just um, available videos to you that are all high intensity interval training of varying degrees of um, intensity. And I was actually pregnant with our first child in this shot. And so I was doing the beginner version. Dr. Ryan Muscley was doing the expert version. Uh, so that was, that, that was a football <laughs> version of me right there. The cool thing is that this was like eight <clears throat> plus years ago, um, but the principle still stands. You know, you can just pick up this exercise now um, and have the same results. And that's what I love about this. You can actually go to maxd3.com and it's like 10 bucks and you can get a subscription on your phone for exercises you can do right in your living room. So there's no excuse. Yeah, we've, we've literally played these videos on our phone in a hotel uh, either a hotel bedroom or a hotel um, gym. And the airport. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did one in the airport, too. Mm -hmm. We got some stairs. It was fun. Yep. So, all right. Um, next one is so we, drink uh, enough water. Yeah, Go. I'll take this one. So this is, this is really profound. It seems super easy. Um, but if you don't track it, you really don't know how much water you're drinking. If you don't own a water bottle, then you're probably mostly dehydrated for most of the day. So... First step, buy a clean water bottle. I say glass or stainless steel would be good. Um, but most of us, 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. So uh, that's a big problem because it can cause fatigue. It can ca cause brain fog. Um, it can make you irritable and it can actually make you feel hungry. So a lot of times people think they're hungry. They're actually just dehydrated. So yeah, huge. try drinking some water. And if you want to boost your metabolism by 30%, just add some ice to it. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah, huge. Drink water. It's one of those things that people hear and they're like, ah, it's too simple. Like, how could water make that big of a difference? We've got to realize that every uh, chemical uh, reaction in your body or almost all of them um, happens in water or is an aqueous you know, reaction. And so when you don't have enough water, it slows all those reactions down, which basically means your body's working at a slower pace, meaning it's going to burn less fuel. Well, if you want to increase your metabolism, get things working faster, provide more of the medium in which those reactions need to happen efficiently. Efficiently. So I promise, just drink more water, and I dare you to not get good results. Okay. All right. Number four, remove the interference. Well, of course, Dr. Ryan and Aaron, you're going to say this because you're chiropractors. You want everybody to get adjusted. Um, that is true, but maybe not for the reason that you're thinking. Removing the interference really just means you know, removing a chemical impedance or a neurological electrical impedance in your body. You guys already know this. If you're patients, you already know this. And if you're not, um, this is pretty basic stuff that you probably understand anyway. But in, in order for anything to happen in your body, you know, your brain has to send a signal down your spinal cord and then out the nerves, kind of like wires in a building. So for your heart to beat, lungs to breathe, eyes to see, stomach to digest food, for a cut to heal on your skin, for your uh, immune system to fight the flu, your brain controls all that by sending these signals, literally trillions per second, um, through the nervous system. Well, 
all those nerves, those wires have to go through your spine before they exit out and then travel on to whatever organ or tissue that they innervate. And what happens in life because of bad posture, it's probably the biggest culprit in today's day and age, bad posture, sports injuries, whiplash, car accidents, uh, slips, trips, and falls, the bones in your spine can shift out of alignment. I think that probably makes sense to you that just like your knee can get twisted, the bones in your spine can get twisted or shift out of alignment. And the problem is it doesn't just hurt, you know, so it can cause back pain, neck pain, or headaches when those things are out of alignment, just like a twisted knee. But the more important thing is that unlike your knee, there's actually nerves that go through that segment that travel onto an organ. Well, if the segment's out of alignment and the nerve is being compromised, it's kind of like a dimmer switch where the energy that's flowing through there gets slowed down. Well, if the energy is slowed down, guess what happens to the function of the organ? It slows down. And essentially it's like being dehydrated. It's dehydrated of the ele electrical impulse flowing through the nerves, trying to get there from the brain. So if you want your body to work faster, more efficiently, metabolize things faster, better hormone balance, you're quicker with your thought and reaction time, having a, a, a nervous system that's free of interference is absolutely paramount. There's a reason you guys, why all professional athletes on the planet get adjusted. It's not because they all have back pain. You guys get that, right? It's not that all professional athletes suffer from migraines and back pain. It's because they all want to perform well. And they realize that in order for their body to function and perform at its very best, there can't be any interference. They don't wait until their back hurts, just like I don't either. I don't wait until my back hurts. I've been adjusted every week for over 15 years, and Aaron has too. Our kids have been adjusted every week since the day they were born, not because they have back pain, not because they have headaches, but because we don't want any interference. It's not just going to slow down metabolism, but it's going to slow down the function of everything potentially in their body, right? So if you want to have amazing energy, you cannot do that if you have interference in your nervous system. Now, I realize that there are some of you, especially if you're a patient, you already know that there's damage in your spine that may not be reversible. I want you to know that it's okay. You don't have to have a perfect spine to have amazing energy, but every time you get adjusted, that energy or that interference just re reduces a little, a little, a little, a little, and you, en you end up with way better energy over the long term. So if you're a patient, Make your spine and your posture uh, a priority. Uh, I'm not going to go through this a whole lot, but this, this is just what studies and research have shown, that all these different segments in your spine have the potential of affecting many different uh, organs and systems in your body. So listen, if you're a guest tonight, and what I mean by guest is you're not a current active patient in our clinic, um, if you have any desire, that's not, it's not what this is about tonight necessarily, but if you have any desire at all to come and see us, um, and you want an evaluation done on your spine, or you know you have some interference in your nervous system or your spine from an accident or bad posture, injuries, what have you, um, we just want to give you the friends and family special, if you will. So uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to call this phone number or email this email address and just let them know that you are on the webinar and you'd like to make an appointment as a new patient. And basically what you're going to get, you guys, uh, new patient experience is an exam, a consultation, any necessary x-rays, um, a report of findings where we tell you, tell you exactly what's going on with you and exactly what we need to do to fix it. And we include your first treatment or adjustment in that process. So normally that's about 200 bucks to do all that. Um, if you guys wanna take advantage of the opportunity, we're gonna do all of that for you for just $49. All you have to do is call or email and just let us know that you're on the webinar and you wanna make an appointment, my team We'll help you get set up with that. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Number five, tap into your stored energy. So I think we'd all love to be able to burn our fat cells for energy. But the unfortunate reality is that most Americans are sugar burners and not fat burners. And that's what's leading to this obesity epidemic. I mean, it is an obesity epidemic, unfortunately. So we understand how powerful the ketogenic diet is, even if just for a period of time for you, not necessarily long term, um, how powerful that can be to not only help you lose weight, but to increase your energy. So the basic rules. Now, this is something that we're going to really dive into at Keto Revolution in February. But just to give you in a nutshell, things that you can start doing now on um, what the ketogenic diet is. And actually, we just did a podcast episode all about this. It was 30 minutes long. You can check it out on iTunes. But you want to cut the carbs. So this would be sugar in most forms. 
not just the sweets, but fruits as well, uh, pastas, breads, cereals, crackers, um, most boxed foods, processed foods. You want to moderate your intake of protein. So most people think they need a ton of protein if they want to be healthy. Actually, too much protein turns to sugar, which then gets stored as fat. Not what you want. So moderate quality protein. Um, and then you want to increase your healthy fat. So fat, healthy fat is the number one missing ingredient ingredient in Americans' lives. Um, so we're talking about raw nuts and seeds, olive oil, avocado, coconut products that are unsweetened, um, full fat dairy products. Uh, those would be awesome additions to your diet. Um, two of the, the great ways that we found to implement keto is by doing bulletproof coffee, which you do every single morning. Yes, love Wakes it. Wakes us all up with his blender, which is lovely. The kids tune it out. Sorry, like, not oh, sorry. There's my alarm clock. <laughs> uh, but bulletproof coffee can set your body into a state of ketosis like that. And that's your fat burning state where your body is actually burning those fat cells for, for energy instead of just waiting for the sugar that you're going to feed it. Um, and then a power smoothie, uh, and we're going to get them the recipe to that. Um, the, yeah, the recipe will be at the Keto Revolution yes. seminar. Yep. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. loaded with healthy fats. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, you know, the reason why we have a picture of an oil tanker here is because I think a lot of people feel like this walking around. Like, what does this represent? Well, if you're walking around with excess body fat, like so many people are, really you're just walking around with ex excess energy. I mean, that's really what fat is. Your body stores fat because it, it, it thinks it's going to use it later on for fuel. Um, but like in this oil tanker, you know, it'd be like if this oil tanker ran on electricity, but it's carrying around thousands of pounds of diesel, like it just doesn't make any sense. The only way that that thing on the back of it, back of its body is going to go away if all of a sudden that engine becomes able to burn diesel for fuel. And that's basically what keto does is it unlocks your body's metabolism so that all of a sudden it's able to start burning all of that fat that you've stored away um, because you're switching over your metabolism. So that's really yeah. what uh, eating keto does. And it's also what the keto revolution is going to be all about. All right. So just a, a handful of supplements that we recommend for people that really do want to boost their energy and their focus. Um, Grass-fed whey protein. Uh, I know many of you are already taking this, but it's probably top of the line, most quality whey protein that you can get from organic grass-fed cows, you know, that feed on grass that's, you know, fertilized with things like fish oil um, high, high dose of omega-3 fatty acids with each uh, scoop. And this is something that we feed our entire family in our morning smoothies. The Max Greens is huge because it contains 26 different vegetables um, in each scoop. So you get like six or seven servings of vegetables per scoop. Uh, this is huge because I think most Americans are lacking not only in the quantity of veggies that they're consuming, um, but also in the, in the quality and the variety. Uh, so we know that our kids are getting, you know, a potent dose of, of vegetables every single morning when they're drinking their shake. Um, and the, the big thing with this is that I know there are a lot of greens on the market today. It's very hard to know the sourcing of those greens powders. And I can tell you that our greens are 100% organic. So we've got, this is power punch in each scoop. So you're, you're distilling down, you know, 10, you know, seven to eight. I think pounds of, of veggies with yeah. each with each scoop, and so you want to make sure that there aren't any pesticides in there. So we know 100% these are all organic, um, and that's why we give this to our kids. It's sweetened with stevia. Um, it tastes you know just like chocolate milk if you were to put it in almond milk. So highly recommended for your focus and your energy. Optimal omega. So these are essential fatty acids. I think every American, as I said, is deficient in healthy fats. So this is one way to boost your intake of healthy fats. Optimal omega is, is created with wild caught fish. Um, and really when you consume that, it's going to help your cell membranes because all we are is just a bunch of cells. It's just going to heal those cell membranes to allow oxygen and nutrients to get through the cell membrane into the cell. It's going to allow toxins to get out of the cell. That's going to boost your energy levels exponentially guys so make sure you're you're supplementing with a quality omega this one's infused with um vitamin e so it's going to help reduce the rancidity um, and just make sure that you know it's it's going to be fruitful to you when you when you consume it max fit this is another one it's got green coffee bean extract um, and that's just going to help to lower 
Um, cortisol, it's going to help heal adrenals. It's got ashwagandha. Again, that's just going to help lower cortisol um, just so that you can increase your human growth hormone. Because when you increase human growth hormone, you're more likely to increase your lean muscle mass, which is just going to increase oxygen to the rest of your body and increase energy. Yeah. Uh, we've got two supplements, Adrenal Calm and Adrenal Energy. Most Americans, unfortunately, are suffering from adrenal fatigue, which is what causes you know, daytime fatigue. It causes you to feel groggy in the morning. It causes you to be too wired at night to fall asleep, even though you're exhausted. Um, we just did a podcast episode about this on iTunes. You should definitely give it a listen. Um, but these two supplements can radically reduce um, all of those symptoms that are associated with that. Yeah. So if you have any questions about supplements, you can always email us. You can hit us up on social media. You can ask us in the office. Um, if you want to get these online, we have a great storefront online. You just go to summitcda.com and uh, you can find additional information there as well. So to recap tonight, you guys, the seven steps to creating the life of your dreams and having your breakthrough year were number one, define your breakthrough. Number two, identify your why. Number three, set smart goals. Don't forget the time limit. Uh, war plan to win, create social pressure keep score and use those five keys to generate endless energy. So I hope you guys uh, got a lot of value out of that tonight. Um, I did want to let you know that we are going to make the, uh, the dream life blueprint available to all of you that stuck around to the end. Um, you're going to be able to download that straight from the webinar. And I think we're also going to send it out in an email. So we'll have a record of everybody that stuck around to the end. We're going to email that out to you guys. Um, I think you'll get a lot of value out of that as well. It's basically a playbook for everything that you learned tonight. And it's also, um, something that's, it's actionable, you know, it's interactive. You can actually print it out right on it and it's putting all these seven steps into action. Um, like I said, in the beginning, another event that we have coming up, that's, um, I, I think I'm more excited about this event than I've ever been about any of the events yeah. that we've ever had for a couple of reasons. Number one. Um, keto really is a revolution. I mean, it's something that I get asked about literally every single day. I get thousands of requests on social media from athletes and triathletes and other chiropractors, people that want to know about, you know, how to do keto correctly. Um, I, I would say that we're not the most knowledgeable on the planet, but we're pretty darn knowledgeable just from experience and, uh, you know, learning over the past several years. And we've been able to kind of refine the information to make it really user-friendly user and to make it actionable. Like I said, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of people doing it wrong. And you can actually create health issues if you do keto either too long, too hard, or the wrong way. So we've got this amazing event. It's a three-hour event coming up February 16th at the Croc Center. We've rented out all three conference rooms. We're going to combine them. We're expecting 250 to 300 people. And uh, we're also going to bring in a guest speaker. So this is actually a friend of ours who um, has become a really prominent uh, personality and influencer in the health world. His name is Mike Mutzel. He's an author. He wrote The Belly Fat Effect, which was uh, an incredibly successful book all about belly fat, why it happens, what to do about it. A lot of it has to do with eating ketogenic and doing it the right way. He's also a clinical nutritionist. He's a functional medicine practitioner, and he's a major, major, major health uh, online health influencer, has a huge following. So it's, it's our honor and pleasure to be flying him in for the weekend. He's going to be the primary teacher and speaker for that event. Um, and you guys are gonna, not going to want to miss this. This is one of those events that you're going to get a ton of information. So uh, what we have for you guys tonight, because you stuck around to the end, we've got a webinar-only offer um, normal ticket price for the event is 47 bucks. And guys, even at $47, I mean, my team and I literally sat down and we added up what we thought the going rate was for all the different elements that you're going to get at the seminar, um, well over 500 bucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, even if you just came and sat and listened and you didn't participate in anything else that we're going to be offering, um, easily you're getting $500 worth of information, mm -hmm. not to mention however much Mike Mutzel's time is worth. And I don't even know. Um, but, uh, easily over $500. So $47 for a ticket. I mean, that's a steal. We just want to make this thing accessible for as many people as possible. The early bird ticket price. So if you get tickets between now and two weeks from now, the early bird tickets are only 27 bucks, 
But because you guys stuck around to the end of the webinar, you're going to get the opportunity to have a buy one, get one free. So essentially, you're going to get a free ticket if you do if you buy the early bird tickets. So your tickets go down to $13.50. Um, and you'll get to, you know, I think it's really cool. You get to share this experience with someone you care about or someone you know that really needs to, um, you know, to have this. So uh, what we're going to do, CC is in the chat section. Um, what she's going to do, sorry, guys, you can email info at summitcda.com. And then in the subject line, you're going to write breakthrough webinar. So, and then CC will email you uh, a link. Actually, I think there's an offer in here. Let's see that. Let's see if this works. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we got it to work. So scratch that. So all you have to do, um, there's an offer. So if you guys click on the offers icon, so it looks like a little megaphone, it'll say keto revolution, special offer, um, it has a countdown. So you guys have access to this for, for the next 24 hours or a little bit more than that. So tomorrow at midnight, this thing is going to expire. All you have to do is click on the link where it says add to cart and it will take you to a special Eventbrite page that will literally be taken offline tomorrow night at midnight. Um, and if you just fill out the form, buy your ticket, you'll get two tickets for the price of one. So you do not need to email. You do not need that. If you need assistance, you can. We can walk you through it. But if you just want to go directly to Eventbrite, buy the tickets just for between now and tomorrow night at midnight, you guys will be able to get a buy one, get one free. So we would love to have you there. I know, I know, I know, I know this is going to be the best event we've ever done. You're going to get tons and tons and tons of value. You're going to walk away knowing everything you need to know about keto. How do you do it? How do you do it right? How do you make it simple? We're going to kick off a 28-day keto challenge that's going to be huge. Yeah. We're going to be testing people's body fat before and after. We're going to give you a meal plan. Um, you're going to have uh, checkpoints. We're doing a special video series. Um, the challenge is just super robust. Yeah, I think the challenge is worth 500 bucks, to be honest. I'm really yeah. proud of what, what our team has created for this event. Mm -hmm. So again, we would just want to say thank you for sticking around to the end. We hope you enjoyed our very first ever webinar. Thanks, you guys. Um, you guys will get access to the replay so you can watch this again. But again, the special offer for the Keto Revolution buy one, get one free tickets um, only lasts until tomorrow night at midnight. So follow the link. Go to Eventbrite. You can also email us. We can walk you through it. But um, with that being said, hold on. How do they get their Dream Life Blueprint? Yeah. So the Dream Life Blueprint um, should be a download. Yep. So if you go to Downloads, there's a file sharing. It looks like a piece of paper with a fold on the corner. If you click on that, it'll say Dream Life Blueprint ebook, and you can just click Download. Yep. Okay. If you have trouble with that, you guys, you can email us and just let us know, you know, you were on the webinar. I think Cece is planning on emailing all of the participants because she has a record now of who was on. Right. She's going to send this out in an email. So if you don't want to download it right now because you're driving or you're on your phone or whatever the case is, it's going to show up in your email anyway. But if you want to get it right away, you can just go to that uh, file, file sharing icon and then click download the file. Cool. We're going to hang out just for uh, a few minutes. You guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat line and uh, make your way over to Eventbrite. Go ahead and get those buy one, get one free tickets while you can. And uh, Aaron and I will hang out for just a few minutes and answer questions if you have any. What is Bulletproof Coffee? Yeah, so Bobby Stanchfield says, what is Bulletproof Coffee? Um, Bulletproof Coffee is, uh, you can do it a few different ways. It doesn't have to be exact. What I do um, is I brew 12 to 16 ounces, 16 ounces if I didn't get enough sleep the night before, um, of organic coffee. So Costco's got good organic coffee. Pilgrim's has a bunch of good choices. Um, I'll brew 16 ounces of black coffee. I'll put that in a blender with organic butter. And I usually do two tablespoons of organic butter and then I'll do a tablespoon of MCT oil. You can also use coconut oil, which MCT oil is in coconut oil, but MCT oil is basically um, the best part of, or the energy giving part of coconut oil. So you put it all in a blender, blend it for about 10 seconds, 
You get this nice frothy head on it. It looks kind of like a latte. It's really good. Um, it's pretty thick and rich, um, but I love it. I mean, even, even when we go on vacation, we'll take like a little blender or we'll buy the ingredients when we get there. And uh, it's basically just kicks you into um, ketosis first thing in the morning. Yep. So next question, how important is having reverse osmosis filtered water? Yes, your water should be filtered. Reverse osmosis is going to take out a lot of the nasties. Um, and I know people that have reverse osmosis filters who then add back in some trace minerals. And so that might be something that you want to do because it does really take out everything. Um, as far as the temperature of water, yeah, I mean, if you're drinking water with food, you should probably do room temperature or, or warm water that is going to be easier on digestion. Cold, cold water stimulates metabolism, though. And Yeah. Um, for a bunch of different reasons that we don't have time for today. Um, but it, it invokes this thing called cold thermogenesis, uh, which basically makes your bad fat burn your – or your good fat burn your bad fat for fuel. But, uh, but yeah, for digestion – room temperature water is better. All right. Chris wants to know what my daily training looks like. And I try to work out five to six days per week. And all I pretty much do, especially in the winter time is, um, I do high intensity interval training. Uh, so if you go to maxt3.com, um, most of those exercises are what I'm doing. I do have like a home gym. So I've got free weights, jump rope. I have an, like an aerodyne bike and I have a rowing machine and that's how I get a lot of my cardio. But my cardio is really just high intensity interval training. So it's short bursts um, of a lot of intensity with a rest. Um, and then I just, you know, keep doing that. But if you go to maxt3.com, that's essentially what I'm doing. Uh, and then in the summer months, spring months, I'm running a lot more. I like how they asked me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Nobody wants the Ironman training no. schedule. <laughs> I don't either. It's not. So Mark says, uh, in the past, when I've missed a goal, I've taken it very hard. What advice uh, would you have for someone like that? Well, first of all, Mark, me um, yeah, me too. Like, believe me, just because, you know, we have a bunch of accolades to kind of talk about now, I'm telling you, for every win, there's probably five to 10 losses behind that. So um, I think I think the biggest thing is, you know, it's a, it's a mindset. So I think, I think your mindset has to change first, and then your actions just have to match your mindset. You know, we talked about that in one of our meetings as a team recently, just about how who you become is way more important than what you accomplish. And so it's the whole Mount Everest thing. So if you set the goal to climb Mount Everest and you put in the two or three years that it takes to actually achieve that, which is legitimate. I mean, those guys put in crazy amounts of training. Well, let's say right at the end, you know, you're unable to go or something happens or halfway up you get sick or what you get hurt just because you didn't reach the top didn't mean you still didn't achieve the goal because the goal all along wasn't actually to put your flag on the top of Mount Everest. It was who you became in the process. Yeah. So I think having that mindset is having, really powerful. Yeah. Um, and you know, the reality is you just have to go into it understanding that you're not always going to win. And when you don't win, it's not losing. It's just learning. You know, there's no such thing as losing. It's just learning Now you lose. If you don't learn, but as long as you learn from every loss, then I think in the long run, you'll still come out ahead. And giving yourself grace is huge. Just having grace to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to do better next time because this is important to me. All right. Brandon says, most workout programs have a rest day. What do you recommend doing on a rest day? I'm not sure what a rest day is. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, I do take rest days. In fact, I find that I perform better if I do make myself take a rest day. Um, we like to do infrared sauna. So we'll do sauna Epsom salt. We kind of have a routine every Sunday um, after we kind of get our lives in order and the house kind of ready for the week. We do an Epsom salt bath um, together and just kind of chill out. And Epsom salt's really relaxing. It's really good for muscle recovery, um, injury recovery, and uh, it's really cheap. I mean, you can buy Epsom salts at Costco. We put a little essential oils in there like deep blue or eucalyptus just to kind of soothe things. So that's that would be my recommendation. You can also get a little bit crazy with it. I've also done a lot of ice baths. I know that's not something everybody's going to want to do, but there's a lot of really great research about how how uh, how much quicker you can recover. It's true. Especially depending on your training volume, you can recover really fast just by doing a five to 10 minute ice bath once or twice a week. 
Um, Sandy says, my husband thinks he can get most of his water from his food. So how much water should one be drinking? That's a great question. Yeah. And I would say, you know, are you, is he consuming a lot of produce? Because if that's the case, then maybe he's getting a lot of water. Um, but I don't really know what his diet looks like. So it's kind of hard to answer that, but I would say, well, and the problem is the fiber that's in food, uh, or the salt or the electrolytes, it's going to pull water with it. So it doesn't really count. Like you can't really count those yeah. numbers towards your daily total. I mean, the average that we recommend is what? Yeah. Drinking half your body weight in ounces a day is ideal. Um, so I, so, so yeah. if someone's 200 pounds, they drink a hundred ounces of water every yeah. day. I mean, that's baseline. If you're working out really hard or you work outside in the summer and you're sweating a lot, you probably need to go to like 70% of your body weight in ounces. Um, but yeah, getting it from food just because the fiber and the digestive process is going to pull it with it. It doesn't, doesn't really count. So I'm sorry, Mr. Moore. Got to listen to your wife on this one. Okay. Any, all of them. any last questions? Yeah. All right. I think we're good, everybody. So one last time, um, if you haven't done so already, I know some of you are starting to get off and get on with your lives. That's great. I hope you got a lot of value. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click the offers button. That looks like a little megaphone with sound coming out of it. Click that little guy and it'll say add to cart. It'll take you to Eventbrite. And uh, until tomorrow night at midnight, um, not joking, midnight, CC's taking it down. Um, this is just for you guys, people that watch the replay, unless they watch it tomorrow and they're able to sneak onto their, you know, before tomorrow at midnight, this is just for you guys. We want to honor you for sticking around to the end. Buy one, get one free tickets to the Keto Revolution. And uh, I know you're going to get a ton of value out of it. That's right. So thanks a lot for sticking with us. Bye, guys. Until next time.